There was a fine line between controlled speed and catastrophe on the challenging downhill course, and some riders got it horribly wrong. of the mountain bike world are squarely on this 2.2 kilometer downhill course as you take a look at our first athlete coming down here from Australia Chris Kavarik a guy prodigious with talent he's won a couple of World Cups uh, but he's come back from a motocross injury a year ago and let's see how he rides this course if he has to feel a bit gingerly about it or not Dan well talent is something that Chris Kavarik does not lack what he does sometimes lack is luck but we go through the largest section and he is looking super smooth through here. Just kicks up some dirt as he goes through this treacherous off camber section and breaks out into the field towards the timing jump. Uh, just an amazing performance thus far in the early going of our world championships for Chris Kavarik of what is a very strong Australian downhill contingent. And uh, he just gets himself into a good position to pedal across this paddock, keeping the speed going, lining up now as they drop down towards the Luge Bridge. And there's still some incredibly tough sections oh, of this course to go lovely. as he makes his way down to the bottom. And this is a superlative ride for Kavari. It is. He's into the rock section now. This area has claimed a few riders, but not. Oh, maybe does claim Kavari. No, he rides out of it. Amazing. He was clean through there. And you know, it kind of reminds me of Franz Klammer in the 76 Olympics of the downhill. You've got to be willing to really risk it if you want to win a UCI downhill medal. He is absolutely on the edge here as we come into the finish. Oh, he just gets his foot in the wrong position on the pedal. Can he keep the speed going? He crosses the line fastest. And now in the downhill elite men's category, the veteran, John Kirkcaldy. A swan song season for John Kirkcaldy. He was giving it his all, but he's down on the time of Chris Kavarik, one of our early leaders. But John Kirkcaldy was here to put on a show for his uh, fans in Rotorua. They just love him here out of Wellington. He has been living in the United States, raced on the Norba circuit for about a decade, and a very popular figure all over the world in the mountain bike sport. Absolutely. He's one of the gentlemen of the sport, and you can tell from the reaction he gets as he enters the arena just what a hero this man is for New Zealand mountain biking. Absolutely. Twice a Norba champion in the States, and Kirkcaldy having a good run down here. Yeah, he's working ever so hard. You can see the sprint in his technical soul for Kirkcaldy. Well, now, while Kavara catches his breath, we're going to be taking a look at one of his teammates now. This is Sam Hill, and second a year ago in Lavinio in the Alps of Italy, and he'd like a gold medal. Oh, absolutely. Sam Hill was flying. He just flew over the bridge there. And last year, the unluckiest man in the world because he had everything in his grasp. It went away just in the last few sections of the course. Went to Fabian Barrel, but Sam Hill is the man on form at the moment, and he goes through the larches so smoothly. Much, much smoother than Kavara there, Peter. Absolutely. Just a beautiful float. Really sheer brilliance. There we're going to be taking a look at the split time coming up. Sam's parents are here watching the competition today at the bottom of the course, and he's in the lead by .5. Well, 0.55 on Kavarik, and that is no mean feat. But look how much pedaling he's putting in. There's much, much more pedaling than Kavarik, and he is going to be gaining time on his national teammate all the way down. And still another very tricky section of the course before you can even think about catching your breath. This is when the legs are burning now. The lactic acid is building up at the bottom of this run, and look, he's clean through there. Absolutely perfect line through the rock garden and into the final sections round the big firm. He's just got that fantastic silver fern section to complete and he hasn't lost any time at all. He's gained so much time, he's going to destroy Kavarik's time. This is an amazing run and a new leader at 311.03. That is seven seconds plus into the lead and that is simply extraordinary. Well, the Aussies are absolutely killing it here and this is sick Mick Hanna. Now his sister took the uh, junior women's title earlier on today. Can he make it a fantastic day for the Hanna family and Australia?
Well, they are doing awfully well now, sitting pretty at the bottom of the course. Mick Canna, we call him Sick Mick Canna. A lot of people know him, he's a popular guy. He's very popular, and there was no one that they were happier for than Mick Hanna when he took his first ever World Cup win at the opening round of this year's competition in Vigo. And he is looking super smooth through the larches section. He's going right around those gates so beautifully, taking them tight, just brushing them off, and we're going to have a split time coming up. Mick Hanna, and off by 3.62. He's got his work cut out for him. That's going to be a tall order. It's a very tall order because if you look now, he's pedaling as much as Hill was over this grass section, so maybe he's in with a chance, but he has got to keep it absolutely clean through the last few sections. Well, I'll tell you, these gravity guys have to work very, very hard. You think you've got gravity on your side, but you've got to be pedaling, and the mind has got to be constantly dissecting all the elements of this course. It's another good line through the rock section and dropping down past these massive crowds. And coming down to the bottom, the last few meters of this event, and this is where you've got to empty the tank. You've got to clean it out and just go. Oh, he's going to go outside the timer hill, but he's still going for a medal and sprinting hard. Can Mick Hanna get on the podium for Australia? Look at this, how close will it be? And third place at the moment. Take a look at this guy, Greg Minar from the Republic of South Africa, the first African athlete to win a medal of the UCI at the World Championships or the World Cup. Yes, and they call him the Fresh Prince of Big Air. You're not going to meet a nicer guy on the circuit. And he is carrying a lot of speed. Peter, he's on board one of those revolutionary Honda bikes. Yeah, they're absolutely extraordinary. The latest in technology, writes for Martin Whiteley's uh, team during the World Cup season. But Menar now with a stripe of South Africa. And looking really good. A little bounce around there, though, Dan. Oh, yeah, but he recovered well. Now, can he accelerate out of the woods? We're going to see the split time, I hope, coming up. Oh, it's going to be just outside that of Hill. And can Minar claw back two seconds on the bottom half of the course? And this is going to be a very, very tall order, even for a rider as gifted as Greg Minar from Peter Meritzburg. Well, he's go, keeping go, go, the paddling go, go, going. Go, go, go. He had a little look down at his bike as he drops down towards the luge bridge. And here he comes. Oh, through that section sweetly, up as close as possible to the trees and coming up towards the rock garden. We'll see how he takes his line through here. And it's going to be a very good line. A beautiful line indeed. Greg Menard just dissecting this course like a surgeon out there looking good. But it, this is going to be awfully close with Sam Hill sitting in the hot seat at the bottom of the course. Sam Hill set a fantastic time. It's coming up. We've got the last few meters, and it's going to be outside for Greg Minard. Can he get silver? Maybe he'll medal. We'll look, yes. Right now, he's in second place at 315.25. An amazing performance for Greg Minard. And now, really one of the sentimental favorites, the steel man from Sheffield, England, Steve Pete. You know him well, Dan. And I think this is a guy who has been denied, been so close, but denied a world championship jersey. He has so many silvers in his locker. He would trade everything, I think. He traded his World Cup titles for a gold medal. And Steve Pete, he's a fantastic guy. He became a dad last year, and that's a big, big part of his life now, Peter. Yeah, I've known him for more than the last decade. And I, oh, look at that, boy. That, that is going to hurt him. It's just those little, little mistakes that add up. Yeah, coming to almost to a stop there. And Steve is going to be kicking himself, I think, if that costs him a medal at the bottom of this run. We'll see how he's going as he comes up to the split time. Oh, he's down on Sam Hill by some way, 3.85 seconds. This is a lot of time to pick up, but if anybody can do it, it can be Big Steve Pete, PD as we call him. Look at him in the stripes at Team Great Britain. And a sentimental favorite for a lot of people here, much like John Kirkcaldy. People like it. Yeah, he's a, he's a big fan, hey! a, a big favorite for the neutrals. And all oh, just kicked out a little bit there as well into the rock garden. We're going to have to see something extra special from PT if he's going to get a medal here. He's just got to air it out and really take every risk he can. But the problem is now running out of time and space to do it. About 200 meters left in the race. And he is going to have to have a sprint like a road cyclist to get up there. The clock is ticking by. It's silver up runs that he's aiming for. Right, he's past the gold now and down to the finish. He's in third at the moment. 
Steve Pete 317.92 in third place. Well, it's Nathan Rennie of Australia, and it's been a bit of an Australian benefit up to now. And big Nathan Rennie was the fastest qualifier. Can he carry that speed? First in the 2003 World Cup, a guy who has been given the gift of size and power and strength, and this guy can really generate some wattage. But the amazing thing about Rennie, he's a big, big man, but he's very agile. You'll see him move all over that bike. He's a teammate of Steve Pete. He's a friend of Steve Pete. But is he going to be the man who pushes Petey out of the medals? Well, it certainly is going to be a very interesting lower section of the course. Nathan Rennie looking good here. Smooth through there, very close to those side gates. Yeah, Rennie almost taken out by a rolling lock there. But coming up into the rock section, that hasn't failed. Him, a lesser rider maybe would have been spooked by that lock coming out of the woods. And the focus, the mental focus is what's so impressive here right now. He probably can't hear the crowd. He's focused on the line here to pick. And it's just a few meters to go for Nathan Rennie. It isn't going to be gold. Sam Hill acknowledges the crowd as well, champion. What would it be? It's bronze for Rennie. Nathan Rennie and an unbelievable performance today. There Sam Hill celebrating what a day they have had. Don't know what to say, it's awesome. <laughs> Your run went to plan, everything worked the way you wanted it to? Yeah, I just kept it smooth and hit all my lines and uh, paddled, paddled as strong as I could where, where I was out in the open, so really happy with my run and the way things turned out. Ladies and gentlemen, in first place, winner of the gold medal and world champion, Samuel Hill!